Welcome to Oregon Voters Digest, the program that brings forward the social and political issues that are important to people living here in the Pacific Northwest. And now, your host, Bruce Broussard. Welcome again to this segment of the Oregon Voters Digest. I'm Bruce Broussard, your host. I hope you're all staying cool. I mean, it's pretty warm out there right now, but you know, but like anything else, just take it easy and, and things will be fine. I might also mention that uh, there were several other veterans that came in to see me the other day. I, I took them down to the VA and picked up their card and this, that, and the other. They had their DD-214, and they talked about uh, some of the issues that they had when they were out in, out in Vietnam, or just in the military for that matter, and said that they're now on the road. They're, they're getting paid. Mm-hmm. Good. And that makes it really nice, you know. So I would encourage you, the parents and loved ones and whatever, that if you've got a veteran residing with you or you know of a veteran, I'd sort of encourage them to go down to the VA and at least get the just just a basic military card, and all of a sudden you, they, they may discover that they might be able to get free medical, uh, free medical, and they might be getting some pay uh, based on maybe some of the things that, that happened to them while they were in the service. So again, I would encourage you to do that. Okay, well today's show, as you as you note, uh, last week I did a I did a piece on Father's Day. I had a minister here with me and and another guy, and and we talked a little bit about uh, Father's Day. And uh, I thought maybe it would be neat to, to go on and extend that uh, to, to today, to this show, and happen to have someone you've already had, you've, you've had the opportunity and pleasure of meeting uh, through, he sat in my seat at one, several times. In fact, he's still dedicated to that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep him on that, <laughs> that part of it. But Donnie ain't there. And, uh, and Donnie's got some very neat things that we're going to be discussing in the show. But this is going to be sort of an extension of Father's Day. And um, it's like anything else, you know, there. There are all sorts of things that one can do, uh, sometimes monetarily. You might not be able to do this, this, that, and the other. But uh, we are definitely in dire need, if you will, of, uh, I'd say, a black men uh, responding to their, their, their kids. And very important. As you know, we, we, the statement you hear many times over about the criminal justice system, where a number of the dads are there, and et cetera. But, you know, uh, it, it's a tough situation. But I would encourage you to not only... Uh, 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 respond to the needs, if you will, of fathers, to those fathers that I'm talking to, that uh, do get involved and engage with your, your, your kids, especially your sons, uh, across the board. So with that, uh, Donnie, how you doing? Doing good. Yeah, doing so you got good. Darnell. I was kind of, yeah. I was interested, I was lacking in the fact that the name was so close, I had mm-hmm. no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Darnell. How you Thank doing? Thank you. Pretty good. Good, 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 good. Well, anyway, um, uh, the, the piece that I've got here before me is that uh, this is a, this is a publication that 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 Danny did, uh, and I, I think it's really a neat neat piece. And I told him, I said, "You got to bring this." He showed this to me, and I knew that he was he was in the process of putting this together. And uh, it was a very enjoyable piece, a good quick read, a good easy read, mm-hmm. which I like that part. But he got a lot of pictures in it, and I, that's the thing that I like. And uh, and he's and he's basically got involved you know and as long as i've known he's been in the administration he and his wife both yeah just heavily involved in that piece of the deal but it was to my surprise that all of a sudden he's an outdoorsman yeah and then he, <laughs> and, it, and that just blew my mind mm-hmm. and i said man you got to bring this you got we got to talk a little bit more about this and and maybe there might be some opportunities for those folks who are listening and looking out there today and uh, that, that the, the experiences that one get uh, getting that outdoor part being that you were sitting up in offices you and your wife daily on an ongoing basis mm-hmm. now all of a sudden you get this involved you got the kids involved and this mm-hmm. that and the other so let's talk a little bit about that I, I i just basically looked at some of the things i looked at the glossary and there are all kinds of goodies there table of contents i like that too mm-hmm. the way you listen them out you can just go right into it and get right into the book and and pick that piece up because that's the whole idea you know you can get motivated by doing things you know and if you get something there so well, let's talk it, about that well first of all the name of the book from the city to the woods from the city to the woods i got from this guy right yeah. here come on absolutely and then the second part of is that it, why his photo is in there yeah <laughs> is there a photo? He's, right, he's right on the front <laughs> of that he's photo on the front cover uh, that's front my, cover. my bribe <laughs> wow Boy, I but tell you. Uh, the rest of that is an african-american family's hunting experience okay and, okay and so we're cool. we're hunters we're, 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 the we're fishermen and fisher women too in, the, in our family but we just want to share our family experience with yes. everyone because we believe being inner city people mm-hmm. that a lot of people from the inner city don't know the joys of outdoor recreation in the pacific northwest in the pacific northwest <laughs> yes. Yes. and you know there's all kinds of opportunities to get out and hunt 
mm -hmm. and fish and learn mm -hmm. skills, commune with nature, mm -hmm. contribute to conservation, all these kinds of things mm -hmm. uh, await you if you have an interest. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes people just don't think they even have an opportunity mm -hmm. to get involved. And when they do, there's a lot of different benefits that you derive. Talk mm -hmm. about your experience, Donnell, as a young person. Well, uh, most of my experience have to do with the relationships I was able to build, uh, the connection I was able to develop with my father, uh, with, my, with my brother, mm -hmm. uh, with my mother, with my grandfather. Mm -hmm. uh, and those are those memories that were created uh, and the ability to actually take care and provide for one's family. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandfather mm -hmm. did that. Mm -hmm. and that's why my mother is probably alive and probably mm -hmm. here and probably mm -hmm. doing well today. Mm -hmm. And that's a part of me being here uh, mm -hmm. today as well. And so it's always, uh, always been a part of my life. I'm, I'm, I'm really fortunate that I had a father who was able to have the resources and the desire to right, right. develop that in right. me as well. Right. I'm really fortunate. When did he introduce you this, Darnell? Well, I've been shooting since I was six. Six years old? Yeah, six years old. So that's when I first started shooting. I've uh, been shooting a 12 gauge since I was 12. <laughs> I was just getting ready to ask you that. <laughs> yep. was, it, was it shotgun? Or was it... <laughs> well, no, we, we started off with 22. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. we started off with 22s. Okay. And so, uh, but uh, at the age of 12, once uh, me and my brother, my brother who's 14 months younger than me, mm -hmm. um, at around 12 or, or, or 11, mm -hmm. we uh, he got us into the sport mm -hmm. just to uh, keep us into something positive and productive uh, and, and keep us from, from mischief mm -hmm. of the streets. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the start. Really important that I gave them was the one that we are advocating for everybody and that's to get certified in hunter education. Okay. And and that raises for us here in, in Voters Digest yeah. what are the political issues around yeah, yeah, this yeah, that's hunting. A, that's a heavy, and right? the one that I've been working on again, most recently testifying before the Oregon Fish and Wildlife Commission is, mm -hmm. we don't have any hunter education classes scheduled in Portland or Multnomah County. But they have, but they are, there are some. There, are, yes, they but have a whole are. schedule okay. in eight different counties. But not here. But not in the most populous county really? in County. the state. Really? And this at a time when the numbers of hunters and fisher people is shrinking, mm. and the fees are going up. Mm -hmm. You'd think you'd want to reach out and tap uh, a new market, if you will. Hmm. Uh, if you were in the private sector, maybe we'd be thinking mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. that we can't just keep raising our prices. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to serve more people or right. get more people interested in, in buying hunting and fishing licenses. Right. Right. So right. Right. Um, that's an issue. Uh, they're actually, the response and new information I got was that there's two parts of the class. It's an academic part. There's about three or four sessions, three hours, mm -hmm. uh, classroom instruction. And then there's uh, a few hours of actual shooting instruction. Okay. okay? And, and so they're going to do the uh, shooting portion, I think, at the Portland Gun Club for people who go online and do the academic portion. Mm -hmm. The academic portion online, you can do it, but what you're going to miss and what we need the most mm -hmm. when we're dealing with inner city people, mm -hmm. especially youth, is mm -hmm. meeting other people who have an interest in yeah, hunting right, right. from your own community mm -hmm. and developing and bonding mm -hmm. with some friends, mm -hmm. lifelong friends perhaps, that you can go hunt with. Mm -hmm. And also... I just happen to think the actual hands-on class is so much better. That's the way we did it. I have to ask you, Donnell, as a person going through when you were 12 years old, what would you think about going online since you're very computer savvy versus the kind of class that you had? I, I would agree with you. Um, even though I am computer savvy, I really appreciate a personal touch. Mm -hmm. So that's within learning, and that's within connecting with people as well. Mm -hmm. uh, it brings a, a lot of opportunity, just as my, my father mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, to meet other people who might who might be interested mm -hmm. in the same things that you're interested in. Who, and then also the uh, benefit of shared knowledge. Mm -hmm. It's nothing like uh, getting that real-world experience. I remember some of the things that we... Uh, we talked about in our hunters education mm -hmm. that we got from our instructors mm -hmm. uh, just about different things whether it be uh, the different uh, the different pros and cons of different knives uh, to uh, 
the effect or what a uh, a spent shell could actually do in a gun and actually refire it again. Mm -hmm. So um, it's very important. Uh, is very uh, invaluable the knowledge and real world experience that you can get from an actual person, an actual instructor. We were fortunate Nick. that in in the class that I took them through, and I went through the class. I'm going to start asking more questions. Okay, uh, I, you, but I just we're so to, we're so yeah. good being here. <laughs> I, I got to ask him some questions. I just wanted, wanted uh, to share on, that there was a gentleman taking his son through the class who actually was an author of How to Hunt Black Tail Deer. Oh, okay, and that book has helped us harvest deer in western oregon yeah. just because oh, really? we had the actual person in the class because that was a question you i was going to be asking you in terms of how extensive is this this mm -hmm. whole high class this classroom mm -hmm. and what's the extent of the questions etc cetera, etc cetera. what kind of background would you have to have in order to be able to pass that and appreciate the that that, that, that piece anything on that can you talk well about you, that? you can actually donnell and i if we would go ahead and finish our paperwork we probably qualify as instructors is that right? Yeah, you know. Well, you've, you've hopefully, it's my pro staff. You <laughs> yeah, know. you've been out there. You've yeah, been out there. yeah. But I'm just talking about just the average person. You'll say, "Okay, I'm interested. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm interested. One, where do I sign up at? Mm -hmm. And two, what kind of background material do, would I necessarily have to have in order to be able to go in there?" Well, and, we and, start with hunter education. You take that class. Also, the Fish and Wildlife uh, Department has other actual hands-on classes okay. like. Uh, at uh, venues like, say, uh, Sophie's Island, they have shotgun clinics where youth can learn how to shoot a shotgun in September before bird season starts. Is that cost? Mm -hmm. Is that cost? Uh, minimal cost. Like Min minimal cost. You know, ten to twenty-five dollars, okay. something like that, mm -hmm. for for youth. And they also have before waterfowl season a chance for youth to hunt ducks out there and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. They got a, a mentoring program where you can take a person, a young person, along on your license to and teach them how to hunt really? i don't like that idea because then it limits the, you know how much meat am i gonna yeah yeah, be yeah able to take yeah, home because yeah. i want that youngster to be able to take his kill home to right. uh right. to to his his house but uh, uh there are a number of programs like that and and uh, you know uh how to hunt pheasants for example mm -hmm. I, I went to a wonderful program that they had at ee e. wilson wildlife area down close to uh, Corvallis, and it was a day-long program for mm -hmm. 25 bucks. Not only did you get coffee and donuts, you got two hours of instruction mm -hmm. in the classroom setting. Then you went onto the range and mm -hmm. shot trap and skeet for a couple of hours. Then you had lunch, and then you went out the rest of the afternoon mm -hmm. with trained dogs and handlers mm -hmm. and actually hunted. A pheasant that had been planted. Mm -hmm. so what a wonderful day for twenty-five bucks, Jeez, man. Well, well, look, one one thing I would like to add to that too, especially uh, for people who might be intimidated by the test, is that me and my brother we passed it at the ages of twelve and eleven. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Yeah, so uh, you know, I you might think you know a college edu educated guy like me uh you probably would have no no problem with it but it's not designed uh, to be the most advanced test it's designed to give you the basic knowledge mm -hmm. to keep you oh, safe those good. basic fundamentals uh, so as long as you have an interest um and a desire uh, to to put some study in uh, but to uh, spend time with, with the material and go mm -hmm. through class mm -hmm. you should be okay it's mm -hmm. really designed as there's, there's uh it's required for anybody under the age of 18 i believe Yes. Uh, and so uh, it's, it's, it's designed for uh, a lot of people uh, mm -hmm. to be able to, to gain the knowledge that they need to be. Well, it, it's be designed safe. for a beginning hunter. Those mm -hmm. uh, under 18 have to have it in order to get a big game license. Big game license. And license then process also there. to hunt in other states, it, it, you, it may be required for people of certain ages. Now, we went to Mississippi. We had to call back and get his hunter education number. Just it's, it's pretty well standardized. Yeah, it's a little different in each state, but a lot of the states are requiring oh, yeah. that you have hunter education. That certification is right on your mm -hmm. Oregon license. Mm -hmm. I have a master hunter certification mm -hmm. on mine, so mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed it so much, I took additional classes. Mm -hmm. to, uh, and, uh, well, Donnie, let's, let's go back a minute. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to figure out, you know, what a black man like you getting in this business? <laughs> as long as I've known you, you've always been, like I said, administrator and whatever. Mm -hmm. What spurred your interest first, and when did you get involved in this in this thing? My initial interest in the outdoors was from my uncle and my grandfather and fishing up and down the lower Columbia River. 
Uh, what age were you then? Were you married then? Or? No, I was a boy. I was like <laughs> eight, nine years old. Oh, really? uh, and I, you lived yeah. that far? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We were snagging crappies since we could hold a pole. And but when I really got into college is when I really got interested in hunting. Hmm. I was I had always interested in guns. You know, we grew up during the generation with the Lone Ranger and everybody yeah, else. Yeah. So okay. we wanted some six guns and stuff right. like that. And uh, my mother introduced me to guns. My mm -hmm. mother, uh, as I talk about in the book, uh, she introduced me to firearms. And there's a whole thing in the book about that. Uh, she even left us a beautiful firearm that we found on the last day when we were cleaning up her house. So mm -hmm. Thirty thirty. Uh, Winchester lever action. Really? You know, Winchester 94. I'm like, a beautiful, beautiful gun. And we're using it now and hunting with it. And uh, so, but when I got into college, like when he went into college, he killed his first deer. That's when I killed my first deer mm -hmm. down around Eugene in the mm -hmm. Coast Range. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, it, it, I don't want to get spoil the whole thing about the book, but it, it has something oh, to do, do that, with yeah. the Black Panthers. Oh, really? And my connection to hunting. Really, and, and people could read about it in, in yeah, the okay. book. Oh, so, uh, you might give us a little, just a little, just a little know, piece to, know, yeah, to spur I, me and, to get there. You, that's, is that too much? In we there? had a dinner program, not a breakfast program. <laughs> okay, okay, and, okay, and, and, okay, uh, okay. Uh, 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 okay we'll Single-headed households and elderly people and so forth I see. got meat as a result of some oh, really? of us learning how okay. to hunt. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's what we had to do. Yeah, but uh, you know, that's how I got started. Really, they just had that interest, but. Here's the big issue for us is that, you know, as you leave college and you come back to the ur ur urban area where you're, you, you're from, nobody hunts. How do I find partners? That's the biggest issue. How do you find partners? How do you find partners? In that business, you almost have to. Right, yeah. right. There's a need. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, there's a lot of reasons why we don't hunt. And I talk about that and go around the country and talk about that. Uh, we live mostly in urban settings. We don't have much land. Uh, because we're urban people now, um, the media connection with firearms, you mm -hmm. know, they paint, you know, programs like First 48, man. Everybody that gets killed or does killing is black, just about, on some of these shows that per, where... First 48, what do you mean? It, it's a program that documents uh, murders. Okay. But 99% of what they show is black. Oh, you really? know, Yeah. And, it, you know, there are a lot of programs like that on television uh -huh. which depict negative things about blacks and firearms. Okay. And that's an issue oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. for us. You know, okay. people don't want to urban, have anything. Urban, okay. They've had negative experiences. Hmm. Uh, and our parents didn't induce us to the sport. Donnell talked about that. And then criminal records and the possession of firearms. That's a real issue. Hmm. Uh, and I talk about it in the book. And a lot of people don't know. Even if you have a criminal record, you can petition the court to own a firearm for hunting in a lot of instances. Oh, really? Yeah, pay a fee about uh, currently two hundred seventy-five dollars and petition uh, the local judge uh, and and notify uh, DA's office and so forth. Uh, there's a process. A lot of states have that law. We're going to so have one what, what, what would be the level? I, you know, I don't know all okay. of the issues, but I. Anybody who'd be interested, I can give you a I site you. I got you. that has complete information. Okay. And because okay. I didn't know this either, people say, "Well, you know, I, I'd like to hunt, but I, I, I you know, I made a mistake and a mm -hmm. long time ago." And mm -hmm. I can you share that site? That. Can you share that site? Uh, is it that, is that oh yeah, oh yeah. No, it's okay. it's on, you know it's on the internet. You can okay. Google it Google and everything it. else. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. It's, okay. okay. No, it's it's it's. It, not only that, they'll give you lawyers who want to take your case. I'm <laughs> 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 yeah, telling you, the internet is something else. But uh, so why do you hunt? I'm mean, going to ask you a question. When you, okay, you started out young and whatever, but then you got the kids involved and whatever. Mm -hmm. But you brought the kids in, right? Which is good. But why do you hunt? They're as a dad. As a dad, one of the reasons I hunt is it's a challenge, and mm -hmm. and it uh, it allows me to, I don't know, it's, it's something primal about mm -hmm. it. Uh, one of the things, I eat a lot of meat, and mm -hmm. I, you know, I'll eat a bear. Yeah. I'll, you know, I'll eat a deer. I'll eat elk is terribly good meat. Yes. You know, I haven't <laughs> had any, I did have moose recently at a 
a legislative thing, uh, a legislative caucus uh, for the first time. But and it was it was outstanding. So, uh, but I'll eat a pheasant or ducks. I, I have to mix it with some pork and make sausage. But mm. you know, I eat a lot of meat, and, and there's nothing wrong with a organic, renewable meat resource. Like mm -hmm. and hunting provides that for us. So we have a lot of interesting things in the freezer uh, from that standpoint. But the challenges, you know. And then when I was young, when I was his age, because I couldn't find partners, I used to hunt alone a lot. And that's a big challenge. Was your One, dad living at that time? Uh, no, he wasn't a hunter. He, he wasn't a hunter? No, he was, he was just on your own. He was dancing. He had your little BB gun was, every so often. He was dancing, dancing, hunting. <laughs> <laughs> dancing, hunting, huh? He's a dancing yeah, hunter. He'd rather dance than okay, hunt. Okay, you know? okay. So no, he's... but, you know, it's, it's just challenges. So who was your partner? Did you have someone that... You know, I think really didn't time. have one single partner. I had a gentleman who was a, a state police down in Salem that I hunted with uh, several times. Mm -hmm. But other than that, I would, yeah. you know, I would just hunt myself, you know. Really? And I made my partners when they became, yes. I quit hunting all together uh, okay, okay. for a while. Okay. They became 11 and 12, him and his brother Kenny. Okay. And I made me some partners. I got you. So I still I got, got a partner got right now. I got you. Okay. You know, so, uh, but then as the internet came into play and we came up with the African American Hunting Association as a network and the website and all that and, and the blog, and now people are reaching out and saying what they're interested in and come and hunt with us. So I already was hunting Mississippi because of that connection to my wife's folks and those folks down there just love me. They take me to their their farms and, and their clubs and they, they embrace us, ride us on their four wheelers all day. Hmm. Some pictures in the book of, of, of these wonderful guys and, and, and we hunt. And then guys started inviting me from Texas Hmm. I've been down there a couple of times. Really? Yes. And I was just going to ask you about all that. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful guys. And uh, we were hunting white-tailed deer, both bow and then uh, uh, rifle hunts. And then a gentleman out of North Carolina invited us to go to Alaska, invited me to go. Uh, one of the gentlemen scheduled to go died. And so I was able to bring him at the last moment. And we had a trip of a lifetime. Wow. And so we wow. that's documented that's huge. That's huge. in the book as well. That's so, huge. and uh, and he killed a really nice bear. We have a nice trophy rug that that uh, black bear that he killed. I didn't take one at that mm -hmm. point. We had one for the family. It was all, but we took brought a lot of fish back, mm -hmm. halibut and all the other five species of fish from the Cook Inlet. And uh, so, I just had that desire to want to be out in the woods. It was mm -hmm. an extension of the fishing. Mm -hmm from where we started with mm -hmm. my uncle and granddad. And uh, and now I'm trying to get other people interested in it uh, because it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know, it's a lot of fun. And you mentioned, uh, you, you said something like you got both of you donning uh, the logo of African American Hunting Association. Yes. One, uh, how did that start? Is that someone else's uh, venture? Or well, no, that... Who created that piece? Well, again, you know... Is My mom passed away. She left me a little something, something. I said, okay. I'm going to put together a website. So I got a provider and put it together. And so... Uh, Your administrative skills. You no. Know, that helped out. Well, that helped out. Yeah, yeah, yeah it helped yeah, out a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, you know, but, you know, what you I know about... Together? Technology, you could put in your little come finger. on now, Donnie. Come but, on, <laughs> but his, like his brother is my network administrator, oh, yeah. or whatever. Uh, yeah, but we we muddle our way through it. But we did wanted to put some resource out there that said one, hey, black people do hunt. Two, here's some information about it if you're interested. Hmm. When did you could, start this? When did, when did you put this? 2008. 2008. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So you could go on the website and go under hunter education, and click on the. Uh, uh, Oregon site for the uh, uh, online hunter education program and actually get connected to oh, really? their site and everything. Yeah, and That's for good. 13 other states as well. Well, how many organizations yeah, are like this, African-American type? There are a number of them. And again, in the book, and in the latter part of the book, I list a page of resources. There's African-American okay. gun club network, gun ownership uh, clubs, hunting uh, clubs, that kind of stuff. Uh, it, and it's interesting to me, though, 
that when you're trying to survey black people about hunting yeah. and other kinds of things like gun possession, I don't think we get an accurate count because I think people are, are very hesitant to give a lot of information mm -hmm. about their personal status right. and firearms and different right, things right, like right, that. Right, that right. So I think that's why I believe we're maybe somewhat undercounted as far as the number of hunters. There's over 13 million hunters in the country uh, about 90% male, 10% women. Uh, uh, and while the, our population is about 38% people of color, only about 7% of the hunters are people of color, 2.9% hmm. black. Wow, wow, wow. wow. You know, out of those 13 million. Hmm. So we've set a goal to increase the number of hunters and shooters mm -hmm. throughout the country. So, mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, there's this big issue about gun control. Yes. You, know, cause you, yes. Know, you got. I mean, the, the politics of it such that everyone is allowed to have, whether it be a, whether you have a criminal background or anything of that nature, and the proliferation is kind of, it sometimes can be an issue. Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you deal with it? How do you, how do you address that? Well, you know, for one, I try to separate the issue of firearms for hunting and the issue of firearms for self-defense. Okay. 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 Uh, what we're trying to get people to do in hunting and target shooting and those kinds of things, uh, while related, is pretty much separate from mm -hmm. some of the issues regarding self-defense and that kind of stuff and Second Amendment rights and that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's hard to put a finger on an exact position on the latter because, you know, with the church incident, sure, yeah. uh, uh, we, we feel really i'm angry about people blaming victims mm -hmm. and saying like you know insinuating people ought to have guns up in churches and yeah, all that yeah. i think that's the wrong answer right right i think that's the wrong answer mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think the answer is more how can we get to people's hearts and mm -hmm. prevent this from happening mm -hmm. because you could try to arm as many people as you want, it's still going to be some crazy people. Right. Oh, yeah. So yeah. if we get less crazy people, yeah. that's going to be yeah. the the true answer. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I, I believe in self defense and all that kind of stuff, but I don't know. But our sacred places and all that, I, mm -hmm. you know, I stop short of saying, mm -hmm. you know, people ought to carry guns oh, yeah. in church. I, that's yeah. that's crazy, yeah. man. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So and I and I really feel for those victims and these and some of the people like we were discussing earlier who are uh, on the board of uh, uh, NRA, NRA and yeah. so forth, who are actually blaming those victims for yeah. not, yeah. you know, subduing this guy. In a situation like that, mm -hmm. there's no, you know, we don't even, even us who've had some training, we don't know if we would react sufficiently to really squash that, what was happening mm -hmm. with that. It's all guesswork, really. Mm -hmm when you come into live fire. We're not trained police or anything like that. So, you know, I, I, I think we have to separate those issues. What we're talking about is getting and using firearms for recreational purposes and hunting, mm -hmm. for target shooting mm -hmm. and, and then also to, to hunt, uh, legally hunt mm -hmm. animals uh, for, you know, game. I, you know, and I, and I go along with trophy hunting too. As long as the meat is is used mm -hmm. uh, and not wasted, mm -hmm. in most states that's required. Mm -hmm. Well, you can't waste any game mm -hmm. animal and that kind of thing. So, well, that's a good point, Jimmy. I, in fact, I'm gonna throw that out there because that was something else we were discussing in regards to um, animal rights groups. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And they are concerned about that area. And, and you you expanded it a little bit more. In fact, why don't you do that a little bit more for the, for their purposes? You got me? Well. Uh, you're not just I just think for sports, you know what I mean? Sometimes you're, you're, you're not, that's a very important piece. Right. Sometimes the animal people who support uh, animal rights uh, don't uh, perhaps know the whole picture. And uh, one of the things we've learned through our education is about uh, the carrying capacity of the land and how animals uh, oftentimes will suffer winter kill and everything when they exceed the carrying capacity of the land. So. It is a management mm -hmm. tool, and uh, hunting mm -hmm. can be a very much a management tool with wildlife too to prevent some of that mm -hmm. uh, from happening. So, uh, and it's it's a balance of nature, you mm -hmm. know. So, uh, we, we we just believe in hunting. If if uh, you know, my portion of my family grew up 
hunting and, and certainly my wife's family that was hunting was a major support of the family mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she grew up eating wild game yeah, right. as a mainstay yeah. in the household mm -hmm. uh, in rural mississippi so uh we don't shirk from or shriek from people say oh, you shouldn't yeah. kill the animals yeah. well you grew up in a different uh yeah. environment yeah. you think differently yeah. about that yeah, so. so you know i was going to ask you i was gonna, again for the for the lay person that's out there you know mm -hmm. as you say for the management if you will of, 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 of wild game and, and like you know you're issuing out tags talk a little bit about that you know about a little bit about that for the lay person you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying it's not just a, you know just just get a, get a gun and right go out there and just start shooting i mean you have to go through a, a process yeah and mm -hmm. even even by taking down certain animals I'm thinking about pacific northwest i want you to share some of those things some of the things you have to do at the, at the beginning of the year and stuff like that well uh, everybody has to have a license right and at uh, during the early uh months of the year you can decide where you want to hunt the uh, state uh, Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife uh, manages all of the game in the state. So mm -hmm. they set, based upon scientific data, the limits. And so they then uh, establish the hunts and how many animals can be killed. So uh, you have tags and you can mm -hmm. you get in kind of a lottery system and draw the tag for the area that you want. You don't always get that, mm -hmm. but uh, you can uh, put in for the draw and get tags, and then that's how the wildlife is managed mm -hmm. so that there's not overkill of the animals. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are some general seasons, and those are seasons uh, in, in areas where, and for certain types of game where there's, uh, it's thought that there's not a, a problem with the numbers mm -hmm. of the animals, uh, but anywhere that there is a problem with the number of animals uh, going below uh, their guidelines or their desired number, mm -hmm. uh, then they will uh, implement a managed kind of a system that mm -hmm. might require drawing tags or even an area can be closed, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, so... Now you got you got federal you got federal land you yes. got state land you got private land and this that and the other. How accessible is it? Let's start off with the private stuff. Is it is that pretty accessible for African Americans or Black folks? Well, we get to a place in this country, we must be really vigilant and really be careful because many places are now uh, available to hunt for a lease. For a lease, you, know, you have to pay. To, to hunt on private property in many areas of the country. We're blessed, I think, in the West to have the most public land hmm. of any in area, the Pacific area, Northwest, in, the, yeah. in the area, in the West, in okay. the Pacific right. Northwest. Of course, the BLM land over uh, uh, region in Oregon, Washington, Northern California, is, I think is the biggest in the country. Okay. And uh, then you have your, your national forests, which are open for hunting. And then you have some state-owned forests that are open to hunting, and uh, there's quite a, just quite a bit of public land. And then the state uh, Fish and Wildlife Department has cooperative agreements mm -hmm. on hundreds of thousands of uh, acres of private lands, mm -hmm. either owned by timber companies, mm -hmm. ranchers, or others, mm -hmm. and they issue maps for you mm -hmm. to utilize to access mm -hmm. those areas. So. There's still quite a bit of access, but we need to be vigilant because it's, it's especially down south where we hunt. Mm -hmm. Man, is it getting closed off? The, a lot of the places that that our relatives tr traditionally hunted are now mm -hmm. closed off, and it's lease only. Mm -hmm. In fact, we mm -hmm. we talk about how uh, uh, our prop we got a little bit of piece of property next to my in-laws, and their house is almost surrounded now by food plots and tree oh, stands right. where there was once just you know fields yeah, right. cotton fields exactly. soy being corn exactly. or whatever the hunting industry mm -hmm. you know how people can make an industry out mm -hmm. of everything mm -hmm. in this country mm -hmm. and so you know people may pay thousands of dollars to lease the rights to hunt on right. property right. and so you're telling me that it's, it's, got, it's getting to be an expensive sport? Oh, yes. Uh -oh. It Let's can talk a be. bit about that. What kind of? It can be expensive if, if you make it. Okay. Um, you still, if you got some buddies, 
and y'all got an old truck that's uh, running pretty good, you can still get a a, a decent rifle for three to four hundred dollars uh, or less, and get out and get you a deer. Okay, mm -hmm. but it is getting to be expensive with all of the fees. You got to have your license. Yeah, I mean the license that I get, and we talk about it in the book, and give Oregon as an example. I pay a like one hundred fifty, sixty dollars just for my license, combination fishing and hunting, and it comes with a lot of different tags. Okay. If okay. I bought those individually, it would it'd be over three hundred dollars wow. or something like that. Okay. So you get you got all of those tags, and as I share with my uh, little little brother and the big brother big sister program, one time we were coming back from from the Dalles and we got stopped because the one of the tail lights was out or something. You know, sometimes when you're launching right, your right, boat, you right, lose a tail right. light. And so they were they were nice and everything about it. But I told him, I said, look, you got to have your driver's license mm -hmm. and insurance mm -hmm. for your car. Uh, your boat better be licensed when yes. you're out there because mm -hmm. we get stopped by the police. Right. Uh, Even in the woods. In the woods. I'm telling you, on the water, everywhere, you got to have that license. And you then by the time you have your gun and your truck, and hey, your hey. food and you you know clothing clothing you know As we you, have a lot of camouflage yeah. food, different things yeah, yeah. And, you know it can be expensive but it doesn't have to be as we point out in the book a lot of times you can just go khaki like us so as we do sometimes or green. green or green or something like that and something that that won't stand out in the woods and go out there's not overnight stuff though yeah, because mm -hmm. if you do overnight yeah. then you got you got all that camping oh, gear you got to right. pick up and stuff right, right even right. then you can you can uh uh get pretty skinny on that too uh Is if you're right? if you're willing to do it yeah <laughs> like yeah. what don <clears throat> you talk a little well bit people about. sleep in hammocks and um they you know pinch pitch lean twos and different things like that yeah. and those are like the bare minimum things uh you know you won't be as comfortable okay. uh, but you if can you're out there. Mm -hmm. yeah if you have the desire enthusiasm keeps yeah you. <laughs> you can get you can get it the enthusiasm keeps you warm you get, right 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 <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna get up tomorrow morning and i'm gonna i'm gonna get me one uh -huh. <laughs> yeah that's yeah. right <laughs> going up and down those mountains you know I mean, that, mm -hmm. that, that, that. and i guess it you know it, it's a physical it's a physical uh, kind of a, a sport my father too. my father-in-law never wore no camo he killed more animals Anybody we know, <laughs> he never wore. No, he just wore what he wore to work on mm -hmm. the farm, whatever. You well, know, back in those days, they didn't have the restrictions that they have, you know, now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, compared uh, to that. well, you do have to have. The one thing you do have to consider is hunter orange for safety. Yeah. And we're an advocate of hunter orange, and of course, in Mississippi, you have to have 120 square inches of hunter orange, and it can't even be a pattern orange. It's got to be the straight hunter straight orange. orange. Uh, state of Washington requires hunter orange. It's kind of bright orange. It also yes. glows in the, right. in the dark too. Right, right. Yeah. Uh, also known as construction orange, maybe. Construction yeah. orange. Yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. Okay. And then the Oregon just changed last year. The only requirement for hunter orange is that youth under 18 must have at least one piece of clothing visible 360 degrees on their body with hunter orange so oh, really? you could have a hat okay or you could have a vest okay you okay. know but we, we you know usually we, we're wearing both hat and vest you know deer are colorblind is what they tell us wow wow, know? wow wow and uh again it's not really well, a lot of hunters we know has never really stopped them from being successful <laughs> the, uh, wow. so we the way i look at it you you know mankind has been hunting for a very long time right and right. uh the hunter's orange and the different camouflages although they might give you an advantage they mm -hmm. they haven't been around for a very long yeah, time right, so right, right. you definitely can get success without right, right. Uh, without following uh, the recent trends, right? You know, I, I want I want to again remind those who are maybe just joining us right now. I've got the great uh, Donnie there here. Uh, again, this is Father's Day. We're sort of extending Father's Day, and uh, you've all all probably have known him as an administrator. He's very much involved in a lot of other things, community and the like. But uh, it's very rare that you find a person that, of um, of his background uh, getting into the hunting business. Mm -hmm. And uh, but but it, from what I'm hearing to, at this point in time is a very enjoyable thing. It gives him something to do. Yes, it does. After those days, you have worked hard and et cetera, and and then getting involved the kids and as you can see, his son Darnell is here too, and again that's a, that's another one imp important thing that we're trying to stress today, mm -hmm. because as, as far as Father's Day and as far as a young African American 
sons and whatever. It's a very tough situation. Mm -hmm. Mother's Day is always a blessing. Yeah. You know, everyone recognizes Mother's Day, but in order to get engaged with your, your son, that's a, that's a very important medium, and we're trying to promote that. Mm -hmm. And Donnie, thank you for, for coming up here and, and, and doing this. So I want to make sure that they know this. And, and we've got, he, he, he actually is a publisher now. He's got, got his son, in fact, he got his son. He did it. <laughs> right there, right on the front, front cover of this, uh, which I, I, I kind of look at it as a, as a, a what to do type piece. I mean, yeah. it gives you all the kind of things that you need to do, and, and he, he's got, it's very, it's very extensive. You know, where to go, and what to do, why you should be involved. Don't get so nervous when you're getting out there in the mm -hmm. woods and whatever. Uh, it's, it's kind of a respectful kind of a sport, mm -hmm. right? And in fact, that's going to be my next question. Uh, is that uh, uh, has there been any, how many fatalities have there, have there been? If you, again, that people concerned about, you know, hey, I'm it's like the was it uh, uh, deer in the dark or didn't mm -hmm. the head didn't the head yeah, like yeah. you hear that all the time aspect of it? People saying, well, gee whiz, we got all these problems now with guns and mm -hmm. shooting and this the other. Then they got the race issue and this that and the mm -hmm. other. Well, why should I get out there and pick myself up a gun and go out in the wood? Kind of a deal. How you how you how you share that with these folks? Well, I believe the number of accidental shootings from hunting and that kind of stuff is gone down okay it's gone down yeah. and i think there's a number of reasons for that people really are getting behind safety but i also think the technology is better too you got better guns and better sights and things you can really identify mm -hmm. what uh, your quarry is out there mm -hmm. and that kind of thing so and education education you know, is the other part of it too you know we stress um and one of the things I say in the book is uh, there are three reasons why we advocate for hunter education. Safety, safety, and safety. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, did I say safety? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so we believe in it. And uh, we, the most dangerous thing that a person does when they're hunting is when they start that vehicle up yeah, <laughs> in yeah. the morning and leave and get on that highway. Yeah, oh, that's <laughs> you know, and so we uh, and 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 it's like any other uh, social activity. Uh, we don't uh, imbibe when we do it. We don't drink mm -hmm. alcohol or mm -hmm. take of any drugs mm -hmm. uh, when we're involved in hunting and camping and stuff. Other people in the past may have done that but i think there's less of that i think there's more restraint really about you know, especially with alcohol and that kind of stuff i think there's more restraint well you know it's interesting you make that point because uh, a lot of times people look at it from the standpoint of that people look forward if you will to going out with their buddies and whatever mm -hmm. uh, you know putting together a big tent and mm -hmm. drinking quite extensively mm -hmm. and this that and the other because that's that's, a, that's another mm -hmm. expression but what i'm hearing you saying is that you know, it's 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 more than that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and you, you you need to be cautious about drinking, uh, almost like drinking, like driving, drinking mm -hmm. and driving. Same concept, right? Yes, I don't absolutely. Um, you know, any any situation where you can find yourself in dangerous, are in danger, or uh, around dangerous tools. You know, whether it be a vehicle, uh, a, a large, opera, you know, machine equipment, or a gun, knives, knives, different things like that. Yeah. I think you, you really need to stay vigilant and uh, restrain from you know, mixing the the, the two. Mm -hmm. You know, alcohol mm -hmm. and those dangerous things don't mm -hmm. really mix. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I'm going to ask you now again. We're in, we're in the Portland metro area. You're very familiar with the surroundings and this, that, mm -hmm. and the other. Are there ever, and then you, I think we, we interviewed a young man the other day, well, you did, you mm -hmm. did the interview, the fisherman. Yes, yeah, uh, was, yeah, was, Chad was, Brown. Chad Brown. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, any thoughts of maybe putting on uh, some kind of a, a little get-together gathering uh, with, with some of the schools, like at the Trailblazer deal or something? That, they just kind of give them a feel. Well, what, what, you know, we've thought about it. Okay. And I want to do it in association with... Uh, if they would get their act together, right, right. Uh, having hunter education in Portland, because we're going to need to do some mm -hmm. recruitment. And, mm -hmm. and I had uh, several top officials uh, approach me after I testified at the uh, Oregon Fish and Wildlife Commission meeting. Mm -hmm. They were going to get in contact with me and so forth mm -hmm. and so on. A little slow about doing that, but we do believe, and I had people who saw that on television and, and right. stuff like that contact me and say hey uh we're really interested and i'm a certified instructor and all right. that so I, it's going to happen right. okay. and in association with that i want to have an event that would say hey get interested yeah. come sign up for yeah. 
hunter education. Come find out what it's all about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then if you're interested, sign mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to find the appropriate venue. Mm -hmm. Schools are not friendly mm. in the city really? to hunter education. Really? Well, I think they're, again, f fearful of firearms, maybe archery, and that kind of stuff. It, see, if we were in Missouri, when I was down there speaking in 2012 to the International Hunter Education Association Annual Conference, the state of Missouri had just passed a law that required every high school to make hunter education available. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> totally different from mm -hmm, here, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here, we're going to have to sensitize people to the importance of uh, making this opportunity for hunter education available because uh, I've had people who said, yeah, I used to be a teacher in the past. We couldn't mm -hmm. talk about hunting or firearms mm -hmm. in class mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. anything like that. So, well, you know, we, what, what comes to mind, uh, and I'm sure you can appreciate this, is that, uh, you know, not recently, just recently, uh, uh, in fact, uh, one Keith's grandson got in this business of shooting a firearm. Remember that deal, our deal of Alberta aspect okay. of it? Yeah. I mean, yes. you know, young person, you know, mm -hmm. and then the first thing that comes to mind, where'd you, where'd you get the gun and, mm -hmm. and this, that, and the other, and, and, um, and you know, you know, they're going through that formative years aspect of it anyway. Mm -hmm. And just teaching them the safeties and, right. the, and the benefits and letting them know early on. I had the benefits because I was ROTC, right. Reserve Officer Training Corps. So I was shooting the 22 mm -hmm. and we were going to firing range. We were competing in this, that, and the other. And we knew that. We don't have that right. here. Well, yeah, one yeah, of the so things you, you learn in hunter no, education. Well, got some well I want to speak to that, especially um, just growing up around firearms. Yeah. I've always felt like, I've always felt that it made me... Um, have a safer um, a relationship with firearms right. and more respect for them. Um, the you know I've played all the video games just mm -hmm. like yeah. all of my other mm -hmm. friends and, mm -hmm. and people my age or younger. Mm -hmm. I've saw I've seen all the movies mm -hmm. uh, that make it all look cool, but I have a, a, a certain respect for firearms mm -hmm. uh, because of my dealings with firearms. And a lot of times people think the opposite. A lot of times people think that uh, at a young age uh, they should keep those things away. Uh, they should they should never know anything about them. But it's almost uh, it's almost uh, similar to uh, you know anything else mm -hmm. whether it be alcohol whether it be mm -hmm. um, sexual activity mm -hmm. if that's something that you keep away from uh, from the people growing up um, you, you give them no mm -hmm. education mm -hmm. at all yes. and not to say that you should you know lay right. the whole thing on them right. at the age of four or anything right. like that but if you give them no education at all uh, why they should be cautious mm -hmm. or anything like that or uh, at least give them enough uh, information to develop the respect mm -hmm. necessary mm -hmm. to, to stay uh, to stay safe uh, and to not do dangerous things, mm -hmm. uh, you will um, have different situations like that, unfortunately. I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah. that thought because when, the first thing I thought about, again, here's a young man, because as you know, he was quoted in the paper mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, when they tried to associate him with the gang type routine, mm -hmm. and I don't look at young people like that as gangs. You know, these are young people, and, and they're just needing it. They're going through that training aspect mm -hmm. of it, and they need resources like yourself and some of the things that you're doing with them. But um, uh, the reaction was, um, in all due respect, was from the mayor, from the standpoint, say, well, we're going to get three more, uh, mm -hmm. more officers, uh, police, gang members, that thing, routine, as opposed to, you know, let's look at what can we do to take the, mm -hmm. take advantage of this situation to help out to, to some of the response that Darnell just made the point of. Mm -hmm. so that's the only reason why I was bringing the point up from the standpoint, because in all due respect, uh, it's a very rarity, if you will, to have a person like you with the background you've had in community, mm -hmm. and then you're hunting. Right. You got me, mm -hmm. and then you're a trainer, and this, that, and the other. You think that if anything, maybe the NRA, now that's a political piece, mm -hmm. would maybe contact you and put together some dollars or whatever, mm -hmm. and put that on, and you put that brand there with it, and talk about that whole piece. And you know, you can communicate with a lot of these folks because. All due respect, you know all their parents. <laughs> all, all grew up with them. Something. Yeah, you and know, so it seems like that. Every time I've talked you know, with somebody, you know it seems like so, I know. So, but their I'm just, not, I'm just kind of like, so I'm just giving give you a little, little seat there because I know you're there. And I yeah, know you're there, yeah, and, yeah. and I think about Ken too. I think we're going to be talking about that anyway because that's an issue that we need to start focusing on. What can we do to, to help the situation out? And, and uh, people like yourself and Ken Barry and whatever who are involved in the educational system, uh, I think is very important. If in fact we're going to get to them. Before they get to that Whatever point, we right? do, I, and I appreciate your 
some of your insights and, and, and ideas. But whatever we do, we have to be thoughtful. I, that's right. And, and that's we right. do recognize and we want people to know this ain't for everybody. That's right. That's true. Right. And, uh, you know, we have to be very careful yeah, about who yeah. you put a bow or, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, or a yeah, gun in yeah, their hands. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, the other thing that we, we teach is responsibility. Yeah, right. And what you will learn in hunter education is you need to lock your stuff yeah, up. You yeah. need to be responsible yeah. for it mm -hmm. and not that they get in the hands of others. And if you do, there's not, you, they can't shoot it. Right, right, right. You right. know, so mm -hmm. this is. And that's where I'm going. Donnie, that's yeah. where I'm going. That's why yeah. I made the statement. Yeah. That's why yeah. you, you responded accordingly. Yeah. You got my point. Yeah. And then I guess the other thing I want to say, which is most important, most important. As I look at you, I look at the mirror and the vice versa aspect. We're in a retired state. And, yeah. And our wives are sort of demanding that, hey, look, we've given up a lot. <laughs> and you got to give me some back. Right? Okay. And I, and I right. You want to say something to her a little bit about that, about getting too much involved? But no, no. Does she, I, does she go out and hunt with you? Uh, does she she does, you? Uh, as you'll see in the book. She can catch some big bass. <laughs> <laughs> she's oh, really? In, she's yeah. in the book. Oh, yeah. It's oh. a family affair. Oh, is that know? right? Yeah, uh, definitely. Now she gets the largest portion on the plate. Oh, who who picks that? <laughs> I used to get the largest. Portion. <laughs> but uh, no, it, it's yeah, definitely but she's a, involved. A family so it's a family affair. kind of an affair, right? You know, I got oh, grandkids okay. shooting in there, and and not everybody likes to shoot, but yeah. some like to fish, and, yeah. and so we do. You know, fishing is our roots. We're passionate about hunting, but fishing is our roots. So mm -hmm. surf and turf is what we like to talk about, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we really do enjoy the the fruits of our labor, so to speak. Mm -hmm. We do mm -hmm. enjoy eating uh, freshly harvested game yeah. or yeah. game. That, good food. You know, I, mean, oh, I, I man. do too. I get it's quite a bit of it myself. It's leaner and less bit of fat and, you know. Uh, None of the antibiotics right, or, no. you know, chemicals that are, you know, other livestock to raise with, mm -hmm. different things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. I've had people say on the 4th of July, man, this burger is really good. Oh, yeah. hey, that's the what is it? <laughs> well, it's bear meat. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> You're having a bear burger, man. So. Well, this this has been really good. I mean, because I'm, I'm thinking about John Sweeney. You know John. John's been yes. one of the, one of them. He comes, he comes here in Voters Digest, too. He's an avid, if you will, um, uh, uh, person who's into firearms and the like he, but he goes to a lot of the uh, shooting ranges and the range and this that and the other yes. but again it, it might be a nice can because that's his side mm -hmm. but yours is a, is a different situation because of who you happen to be mm -hmm. and the concerns we have in all due respect of, of uh, African Americans right very very important and it's very very important again like I said we're talking about Father's Day there's a lot of young males out there that are needing, if you will, that attention. Mm -hmm. I mean, thanks to you, Darnell, that he's getting the benefit of that. And indirectly, we're trying to do in the show in such a fashion that maybe there's someone might be able to reach out mm -hmm. to them. Yes. And then maybe there's a possibility, I'll be more glad to help in terms of putting on that little grouping. And maybe in all due respect, uh, even on, on that other side with the NRA, they're the largest mm -hmm. outfit there. They're right. in need of, if you will, some positives. Right. Yeah. right. They're definitely needs a positive. Maybe they, we might be able to. Well, you're not going to change people by not talking to that's them. Right. So, that's right. That's right. That's you know, right. You, you got to talk engage. with anyone who's interested yes. in our areas of, of hunting and uh, and shooting and that kind of stuff and and just share with them what we're doing yes, and right. see how we could do some good right, things together. Right, 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 right. Now, is there a number for the African American Hunting Association? I, mean, I know I've got the book. They can the do best it. thing to do is go to African American Hunting Association on Facebook. On Facebook. That's our most recent and interactive uh, social media that we have. Do you? Mm -hmm. uh, African American okay. Hunting association on facebook that's it and and you'll find you everything is there a phone there. number for the association that you guys uh, um, that you'd like to put out there we rather have you Go communicate to yeah and communicate with us through the internet okay okay i think we have that i think we have that on the, on the deal on the title of the aspect of it but that's a very very important and i guess i can google myself and get to get a piece of this right no in fact we can't we can't promote no you know yeah no this is for you Oh, good. So you learn more about it. This is called a book stub, Bruce, book and stub. it's for our book. On the back here, you will see a code. You can go to that website and download it on your computer, and okay, that's okay. your copy of the book. And we okay. appreciate you okay, sharing yeah. it with oh, I us. That. So. Yeah, I appreciate and that. And you can find out everything there. Mm -hmm. But you can always reach the Donnie there. I mean, trust me, you can find him. In fact, you can find him on Martin Luther King Day. Yeah. Uh, they got a big out. Uh, they got a, a presentation that's a one of a kind, mm -hmm. if you will. He and Ken Berry, as you know, they've been on here on the show aspect of it. 
I'm sure they're going to have a, a table there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm saying you had a table there the last time around. Yes, we were going to have table one again. Darnell's there, yep. yes. making his presentation, et cetera, et cetera. He's going to follow in your footsteps, I could tell. <laughs> He's got the enthusiasm. Look at it. He does. He, and he can talk. I like that. He, he, <laughs> Absolutely. He, 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 were there I, any things that you wanted to throw yeah. in that we didn't Yeah, yeah we got about two minutes. You know, we were um, really just uh, the holistic view of hunting itself. Well, okay. um, uh, most people associate it with the two biggest things. That's uh, firearms and killing animals, which th that is a part of it as well. But um, there's also other aspects that I, I hold dear, the uh, ability to get out of the city, uh, to reconnect with nature, to have that part um, is, is a very, very big, um, big positive for me. The health aspect, um, the hiking, the walking, and different things like that. Um, very, 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 very important. And I want people to uh, just to make sure that they have an opportunity um, to uh, take a holistic view of hunting and give it a try. Mm -hmm. Like we mentioned earlier, it's not for everyone, mm -hmm. um, but it is something positive um, that I found positive in my life as mm -hmm. far as the friendships that I've been able to create and the, uh, uh, the positivity and the productiveness um, that uh, kept me out of trouble. Okay. <laughs> what about your dad? How does that fit? How do you, how do you uh, with the activities that you involve? Those are some. Uh, those are some of my greatest memories with mm -hmm. my with my father. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, whether it be the Martin Luther King program, and speaking mm -hmm. with him, or uh, it be the fishing trips and the long drives that we had, uh, whether going to Idaho or um, uh, Western Oregon, uh, Southern Oregon, different mm -hmm. things like that. Those mm -hmm. are some of my fondest memories mm -hmm. uh, that mm -hmm. I really hold dear. Something mm -hmm. I wouldn't trade for for the world. So, mm -hmm. uh, get out, people. Okay, get good, out. Good. Uh, so, what are you doing now? Uh, right now, uh, along with helping my father. Um, the African American Hunting Association. Also, um, during the day, I work. I work at Everest College as a career coach. Um, oh, really? Yeah, in professional development. So, oh, great. Um, that's something I do, and uh, also working on writing is one of the uh, uh, one of the big things uh, that I do as far as uh, inspirational writing and um, uh, words of wisdom. Is and you like helped put this piece together. Yes, I did. Oh, um, you know the various ideas that I've that I've had the opportunity with. Uh, it was authored by my father. I will give him right, all right, of that right, credit, right, but right, right. Um, definitely there to to inspire to de to bounce ideas okay. off of him okay. and and give give my input. I got you. Yeah, I got you. Well, Darnell, this has been great. All right. I had to leave for just for a moment but, yes but again we want to thank both of you for, for being thank with you. us and it's been just great and hopefully uh, those fathers out there can take advantage of that and if, if you not necessarily have a son but you'd like to reach out and help out with some young person you can do that again uh, from the city to the woods an african-american family's hunting experience donnie a there and his son danielle thanks again my friend right. you're appreciate very it. welcome okay good appreciate you it's really a pleasure really a pleasure Okay, folks, well, you've had the show, and, and hopefully you've enjoyed this, and, uh, and then do well, and stay, stay cool, like I said before. I'll see you not next week, but the following week, but there will be a show. Okay, take care. Have a good one.